This is the DCS 438. It's a 76mm or 3 inch cutoff tool, basically like a miniature angle grinder. Um, I've been testing it to see how DeWalt communicates with its batteries. So I figured I'd open it up to try and see if I could look at the electronics, but unfortunately the electronics are all completely sealed in, so nothing to be learnt from that really. But I figured while it was apart, I might as well make some notes. The trigger is um, CPXTE. I don't know if that'll show up. About there. CPXTE, Chinese company. Um, found their switch here. It's um, <clears throat> strangely a variable resistance switch for speed control. There's a little circuit diagram that they have on their website. The one in this picture is a 20 amp 42 volt. But um, this one is a 25 amp 42 volt. So it's a mod 04254D. I'm guessing the D is for diode. Got a big diode on the bottom there. This one here in the picture was just a mod 04 205. Uh, circuit diagrams. Got how it works, but some, um, yeah. You've got the main power leads, which is your black and red, your main power ones, and they just go straight through A and B. You've got your diode down there that they've drawn in. SB is just an extra one that goes in. And then this is your uh, speed control and forward reverse up here. So VCC will probably be that red one. That's the um, positive voltage. And ground will be the black one. And then they've got a tap into a variable resistor. So that'll give you a variable voltage depending on what position the trigger's in. And then your forward and reverse is a switch and that's this little guy up here. And that kind of makes a path to ground and whichever one is floating then you'll be able to tell if it's in forward or reverse. Interestingly on same company's website, they have a uh, motor controller, BLDC motor controller. It's not quite the same. It's um, their dimensions are 50 and 59 mil, whereas this was um, 56 mil and I think 40 something, 44 mil. So it's definitely not a. They haven't just straight copied it, but. It wouldn't surprise me if DeWalt had just gone to CPXTE and said make us all the electronics for this and just outsourced it all. So pretty easy to take apart. There's your three larger screws which are a T15 and they hold this little uh, gearbox housing on and then everything else is a T10. None of it's on security. The getting the gearbox case out is a bit tricky. There's four extra screws, two countersunk, two button head, the little machine screws. They're also T10. But um, you need a little, uh, take those four screws out and you need a little pry tool and work it around. It's actually quite a tight fit. And then when you get it out, this little guy, the spindle lock, likes to uh, shoot out and shoot across the room. Fortunately, I managed to find it. Very simple gearbox, it's just an offset spur gear to give you some more depth of cut. So that's your sort of output spindle that the disc attaches to and that gets it nice and low so you get that better depth of cut before you start hitting the bottom of the tool. It's um, slight gear reduction, that's 17 teeth and this is 28. Not a slight, it's almost nearly a 1 to 2 ratio but um, very simple kind of thing. Mm -mm -mm. Motor, or sorry, rotor, is a uh, four pole. The poles align with these notches, so yeah, what do we got? South, north, south, and north again. And six coils in the stator. There are three Hall effect sensors in there. So the Hall effect sensors line up perfectly with the coils. That's the U sensor, that's the V sensor, and that's the W sensor. Obviously, three-phase motor, you got your three big 
wires going in here, and I'm pretty sure they're labelled UVW. Yeah, UVW. You've got five thin wires going in, and they're the Hall effect sensors. So there's a purple and green, and that will be for um, power and ground, and then three black wires, which will be the taps into the Hall effect sensor. Not much more to say with that. The only thing is this is a 25 amp switch, and I feel like this tool's going to go over 25 amps. Um, I mean, switches switch that's rated for 25 amps doesn't mean it's going to instantly explode when it goes over 25 amps, but whether or not this thing continuously goes over 25 amps, we'll find out. Oh, and then I guess one last little thing: the um rotor, don't know how well it'll show up at the back, little typical as you find in all of these things, there's a little radial fan so this sits in there like that and then it sucks air from that end through the coils and then pushes it out that way which gets vented out of these slots in the case there is one extra little trap taking it apart. They've got these little security stickers. This one here went on the base. I was able to get that off fairly easily with some isopropyl. So I should be able to get that one back on. But this one here, which sits on top, I um, even with isopropyl, I made a mess of it. You can see through it. So I think that's gonna be warranty voiding. I know people in America have their whole right to repair and that, but I don't think we get that in Australia. Break the stickers and you lose your warranty. So here I'm just doing a quick power test to see how much current the tool draws. It's 4.5 amps with no load, and then typically it's more like 10 to 25 amps. Remember the trigger was about 25 amps rating, and we're going to go much higher than that, but to be honest, I think it's probably fine. You can go past their ratings and these things will be able to handle much more than what they actually say. Here I'm taking it to well above 40 amps pretty steadily and the tool's not really bothered by it. And for the final test I've pushed as hard as I can slowly and get it up to 80 amps and that's when the electronics of the tool are saying that's the limit, I'm not going to go past 80 amps and cuts off.